Hi everyone and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to this week's reading wrap up. Um, I hope you had a fabulous weekend. I hope June Juneteenth, sorry, wow, I totally just mispronounced that, was really inspiring and um, informative for you. Um, I am here to go over the books that I read in the last week, of which I have 13 to talk about. Um, the bulk of which are going to be Jennifer Ashley books because I, I talked about this last week, I just started Audible Escape and I really wanted to continue that series and once I started listening to the narrator with the second book, because the first book I actually read myself on my Kindle and then I started listening to these on Audible Escape and I just went through so many of them. So a lot of this today is going to be historical romance um, and the Jennifer Ashley books, but I'll actually start with the books that aren't hers and we'll go through. So I know at the very tail end of my review last week, I was reading Lord of Scoundrels um, by Loretta Chase. This is almost a classic historical romance at this point, and so it was really high on my list. I purchased this book last year, and I know that it's on our poll coming up too, and it might have ended up getting picked. So if this ends up getting picked as our buddy read book, which you'll know later this week, um, I'm going to reread it. Like if this is the one you guys pick, I already want to reread this book. I listened to it on Audible Escape on my way home from traveling last weekend. And then I was reading and listening along with it. And I completely understand why this is on everyone's list as not only one of the greatest historical romances, but it should be on your favorite romance list ever. Um, the characters, um, Dane and Jessica are just oh my gosh they are oil and water but they are also like steel on steel and they sharpen each other and like dane he has a lot of baggage like a lot of intense heroes do um he was just treated so horribly as a child and then he takes all that horrible feeling and he turns it into him being kind of a disdainful person who takes what he needs and he has nothing but the pursuit of pleasure in mind and then he comes up against Jessica. So Immovable Rock meet Hard Place. And these two, like Jessica, she knows what she deserves and she sees in Dane the potential to be such a great man. And she honestly, like I would say, not so much where it's like helps him be a better man, but just shows him what she expects of him and he can either live up to it or not. Um, I really like this. I like that Jessica is a bit of an older heroine for historical romance. She's 27. Yes, I know that's not actually old, but in historical romances, it kind of is. Um, in general, you're in historical romances, you're looking at heroines that are between like 18 and like 23. And so she's 27. She's firmly on the shelf. She goes to Paris to kind of bring her wayward brother back into the fold. And she runs up against Dane, who is this, like we said, he's this really popular guy and her brother's kind of caught up with him and his crew and Jessica and Dane kind of go at it. And this has one of the most fantastic scenes in a historical romance novel I've ever seen. If you've never heard of it before, I don't want to spoil it for you. But if I told you what it was, I think you'd be shocked. So either go look it up or just read the book. Like. It took me a year to read this and I didn't know what happened and I'm so glad that nobody had spoiled it for me and I just picked it up finally and got around to it because I was stunned. Like when the thing happens, that's the thing. I was just like, <laughs> like what's going on? It was amazing and yeah, I can't wait to read it again. So if this ends up getting voted as our read, I so look forward to reading it again. Um, then I read Coach Me by Shinora Williams. This was fun because it was a interracial couple. It was also a, um, it's a college coach and it's also track. So it's an, ath it's an athletic romance, a sports romance that's about track and field, which was really cool. I haven't read one of those before. Um, but I only gave this 3.5 stars because I just didn't feel the sparks between them the way that I wanted to. And then it had a really, like, it was like fantastical how it was set up, but then it tried to have a realistic ending. And I just don't really like that. I like the story either to be all one way or all the other way. 
that's just me. And I'll tell you what I mean in a second. Um, because then I read Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, which I've already talked about a ton. Um, maybe you haven't seen those videos yet though, but I actually just made two different um, recommendation videos where I had Sea of Ruin in this book. This is a historical romance about pirates. And I'm actually gonna read the back for you because if you haven't been spoiled for this story, I don't wanna spoil it for you. So I'm just gonna read the back to you, okay? Bennett Sharp is on the run. Wanted for piracy, she fears neither God nor death nor man, except for Priest Farrell. The unfaithful, stormy-eyed libertine hunts her with terrifying possessiveness. Nothing will stop him from coming for her, not his unforgivable betrayal, not when she's captured by the ice-cold pirate hunter, Lord Ashley Cutler. She must escape Ashley's prison and Priest's deceit. But can she walk away from their twisted desires? Two gorgeous captains stand on opposite sides of the law. When they collide in a battle to protect her, the lines blur between enemies and lovers. Passion heats, secrets unraveled, hearts entangled until they break. Can love prevail in the sea of ruin? So the only thing that I'll say that it doesn't explain. So Bennett is the girl. She is a pirate. She is 21 and she's married to this other pirate named Priest Farrell. And there's a pirate hunter, Lord Ashley Cutler, who is after both of them. And this is amazing. A few of the, like, it's just so amazing because it's like, there is a betrayal that Priest has done, which is why Bennett isn't currently living with her husband. And she's kind of been, they say on the run, she hasn't necessarily been on the run from him. She's just been staying away from him because she doesn't want to live with her husband anymore because of the things that he's done. So then there is this crazy attraction and like dark romance between her and this captor. So she's torn between feelings for her husband because she does still have feelings for this husband who betrayed her and this captor. But the thing is for her to escape being hanged, she may need to get in tight with this person who captured her. Um, there is BDSM kink in here. There is I cannot tell you what it is. I mention it in my Goodreads review as well as in one of my other, um, because when I'm suggesting this book as a trope, it's in that, so you'll see it in there. But just in regards to my like wrap up for the week, I don't wanna spoil it for you, but this was great. Historical romance, pirates, there's tons of action, tons of steamy times. Um, there's some trigger, there is a trigger warning for rape in here. Um, it is not like detailed, but it's very clear what's happening. So know that. And there's also an attempted rape in like the first chapter. That's kind of one of our like inciting incidents. But I had to go out and buy a copy of this. I had already bought the um, the ebook, and as soon I wasn't even this far into the book, and I ordered my own copy so that it would be here in time to do this review. And then I just saw that the audiobook for this is come out as well, and I must have it as well because this book, this cover is beautiful. The book is beautiful. Pam Godwin wrote one of my other favorite books, Dark Note. So, yeah, I love her. She's quickly becoming like I need to read the rest of her backlist. I've read a few of her others. Nothing that was quite as fantastic as Dark Note for me, but it was also really good. Um, then I read Him by L.L. Ash. Oh, that was five stars, just in case you didn't know. Him by L.L. Ash. This is a age gap and it is a best friend's dad romance. So this one is about um, this girl and her best friend. They are going to be going to college in, I think it's in Washington, and that is where her dad lives. Now her dad, the dad of her friend, um, what's his name? I totally just forgot his name. I hate this. I have too many characters to know the name of, but he, him and his ex had their daughter at only 16. So he's only 36 <laughs> and, or 35. Yeah, he's only 35. And so both of these girls, like the one of them is 19 and his daughter is 18 and they both move out there to go to school and to help them save some money, he lets both his daughter and his daughter's friend live with him. And now very quickly, the daughter, she starts to spiral a little bit and ends up moving into a sorority on campus. And the dad, not wanting to make his daughter's friend live on her own or have to pay for housing, because that was the whole point, is that she was promised a free place to live, 
they she stays with him and there's already a lot of sexual tension between these two they just get along super well she loves cooking and taking care of a house like she just loves doing that and so they just really like meld really well together and it has a lot of my favorite age gap scenes especially when it's between like a dad figure and someone because like he's trying to get back out there i mean he's only 35 and so he has her like help do his dating profile she's also really into photography this is something i said like the cover of this makes this romance look like it's very dark it's really just her photography she does this was actually one of the lightest and more fun age gaps that i read like it's a taboo age gap but this was really light-hearted and again like in the way where i said coach me like tried to have the ideal setup and then it had like a realistic ending this is basically a fairy tale version of an age gap friends daughter and by that you know what i mean like they're so angsty about people not accepting them and sorry i'm gonna turn this a little bit i was in a lot of shadow right there and things not going that well and then like just everything works out well like i mean spoiler alert it was so sexy so fun i loved seeing how their relationship gets worked out and like there's there's nothing super angsty about this besides that age gap and i really like reading one of those ones well i love dark romance i love when there's lots of angst and things but sometimes it's fun to read one where it's literally like a fairy tale and just everything works out for the couple and you're just so happy for them because these are both great people um there is some trigger warnings for spousal abuse because and in the case of like the woman abusing her husband because he was actually so like yeah the 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 hero in this he was actually abused by his ex-wife and i feel like we don't read about that happening very often but domestic violence can go both ways and she's a very angry person and you know they got together when they were young and they were two people that they never should have been together anyway but they had a mistake she got pregnant and he wanted to be the the right guy so they were together but they really shouldn't have ever done it um it would have probably been better for their daughter if they hadn't gotten married and had maybe you know not been together so i really really enjoyed him uh this is a newer release and it doesn't have very many reviews on goodreads so i think it hasn't been done very well but if you're someone who loves my age gap reps and you like the like you know the best friend's dad or the dad's best friend like i really think you should read this one it was just so sweet and it had so many like sweet moments and it really reminded me of birthday girl that's what i was gonna say without the like questionable cheating level you know what i mean because like birthday girl there's no cheating because she breaks up with that boyfriend before she's there but there's still that like for me it's still that like questionable thing you know this it being your best friend's dad and it's a girlfriend like it's your a girl is the friend it doesn't have that same thing so it reminds me of birthday girl but it was even sweeter like i just i loved it so much um let us see let us see so i also listened to in bed with mr wrong by katie robert this is the first book in her out of uniform series i listened to this on audible escape um i gave this one uh 3.5 because i really really didn't like the heroine in this one and that made me sad so this is a hate to love this is this story starts out with all of these books are pretty short too like the audiobook was only like four and a half hours which means i listened to it in like two and a half hours it was a very quick read um but the thing about it was is it was a fun setup so these two friends they're set up on a blind date and one of them is a um he's like a special i think he's special forces or he's part of a um I can't remember but he's part of an elite team in the military and he's home for two weeks and he, so he gets sent on a blind date with this girl and she's thinking this is great and like if it doesn't work out then he's gonna be you know out of town in two weeks and i don't have to worry about it well he also has kind of like a bad reputation in the town or he thinks that he does and so he's known as the kid who like burned down the high school 
when he was a senior in high school. And so every time he comes back to visit, he feels that stigma. And so when he meets this girl, here's the, here, this, like, this entire trope rests on miscommunication, and it's a stupid one, which is why I have a problem with it. Because you know my pet peeve for miscommunication, and then when miscommunication is done in, like, when that trope is done wrong, it's just all the bad things pile up for me. <clears throat> So the situation with this is that, so he meets her and he thinks that she's gorgeous, but then he's trying to like squelch it in that he isn't just like panting over this girl right away. She sees him and she's intimidated because she's heard that he's a hero. Like she's heard from people in town that he's a hero. She knows that he burned down the high school. Like she's heard about that, but most of the people in town actually talk about what a hero he is all the people he's saved and what like a courageous man he is but because people always joke about him burning down the high school that's the only thing that he feels like he never listens past what they're saying so they meet and they're gonna go out and like right away he starts thinking she's thinking he's a firebug and she's thinking that he's thinking she is like too uptight and you know all these things and so right away they start off bad but then at the end of the day they end up kissing and she continues she says like you're the last person i'd ever kiss and even throughout the book because then what happened like the setup of this so they have this night and it doesn't go well and their friends who'd set them up they can tell that these two really have sexual chemistry but they're fighting it so they end up locking them at a cabin for a weekend they trick them both out to it and then they steal their cars and they lock them at this cabin for a weekend. And they basically bang out their issues. And it was just annoying because every time like they would have sex, which would be really hot, the girl would then get pissed about something, be like, we're not sleeping together again. And she would say that every time. And so it was just one of those cases where it was done one too many times. And so I also know that this is one of Katie Roberts' like first series that she did. And I just feel like Katie Roberts doesn't mess around as much anymore. <laughs> so while I really like the aspect, and that's the thing is I loved this hero because he's an active service member. He is courageous. He's a good person. And then this woman was just, she was a harpy in my opinion. And I use that. I don't use that term lightly because I don't like to make women out as bitchy, but she felt bitchy to me and I just wanted her to stop and I wanted this guy to not waste his time with this girl who's a hero for our country so I ended up I could only give it a 3.5 it's probably more of a three but the sex scenes were good because it's Katie Roberts so there you go um then I finished written in my heart's own blood which I did already a full review which you can watch there this is book eight in Outlander it's an hour-long review um, it's more of like a breakdown and chat like I don't really review these books at this point because they're all five stars to me I'm planning to start reading the Lord John series soon I'm not putting a date on that yet because I'll have a lot of drought lander a lot of time until the next book comes out And I just want to soak it in but I will have more outlander content coming to soon and I you know, thank you as always for being so supportive of that Outlander is my heart in so many ways. I just love it all right um then i also read the player by cressley cole which a lot of you have told me this is your favorite one in this series this is book three in the game maker trilogy the last one and i understand why it's people's favorites okay so i didn't look up any reviews for this i didn't know what the thing is so we have the third brother in the sebastian family and oh, wow how to even set this up Okay, so we meet this girl who she is part of a grifting family, which I really love because one of my favorite shows is Leverage. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's a it's a grifter show where they like in the show they're like getting back at people who have done people wrong and they rob them. And so um Dimitri Sebastian is supposed to be her new mark. And so what she's supposed to do is um to get him to marry her without a prenup and then divorce him and take half of all his money, which is billions because he's a tech genius. He's created some different technologies that have made him lots of money. Um, as well as like all these books are like mob adjacent. Um, 
because the first one actually is in the mob and then the rest of these are kind of just like mob adjacent because they have family members in the mob. But the thing is, is that this grift seems to be going too well. And I don't want to say anymore because I don't want to spoil it. But basically this girl like Sebastian immediately falls for her. Dimitri immediately falls for her. And within like a week, he convinces her to marry him and he doesn't need a prenup and he's willing to just give her everything and it's bananas it's bananas and I can't tell you any more than that but I will say like spoiler not spoiler for like the people who've read it and want to know like what I thought about this there's that feeling you get in a book where you're like waiting for the shoe to drop the whole time and you're just waiting for everything to go horribly wrong and it doesn't happen in this book. Nothing goes horribly wrong. And that's all that I'm going to say, because if you haven't read it, you don't know what the thing is that I'm talking about. And if you have read it, you know what I mean. And this book was so ingenious. It was ingenious. Also, the twist, everybody, if you have read it, I had an inkling what the twist was, but I had no idea that it was so well thought out. I just thought this was brilliant. This whole trilogy, the professional, the, the master and the player, I highly recommend, especially if you like BDSM, you like really sexy books. These are almost erotica. I would say the sex comes in hot and heavy and quickly. Um, and I just, I loved it. I loved this series so much. It was so good. Dimitri, um, as with the other brothers, he has some serious trauma. Um, so beware of the trigger warnings for that. Um, and yeah, I loved it. I loved it. So now let's start going through the Jennifer Ashley books I read. So I've read almost half the series at this point and I'm loving it. The entire series is on Audible Escape. The narrator, her name is Angela Daw, and I love her so much. So the, the second book, because I've already read the first book, which is called The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie, which I heart. I heart that book. I love it so much. Um, but the next book is called Lady Isabella's Scandalous Marriage. This is about, this is a second chance romance slash marriage in trouble. And so we've seen the beginnings of this foundation laid because we have Isabella and Mac Mackenzie and they have been married for six years. The first three years of their marriage, they kind of just lived this like debauched lifestyle. Mac is a painter. He paints nude models. He would bring his wife along with him. They would throw these huge parties. And the way that they got together was very scandalous because it was her coming out ball. And she was 18 years old and Mac met her and got her to marry her him the next day. And then just kind of continued living the life that he was living, but with a wife. Like, he wasn't cheating on his wife or doing anything wrong. Like, he was faithful to her, but he was a drunk. And as I have shared before, that hits really close to home for me. And it all accumulated with Isabella having a miscarriage and Mac wasn't there. Because he would, like, go on these binges where he would, like, leave her because he thought that she wanted him to leave her. And then he would come back and apologize and sweep her back up into everything and it would start over again and after she lost the baby and he wasn't there for her she cut him off she legally separated from him and for the last three years they've lived apart well mac has gotten himself clean he's worked through a lot of his issues and he's ready to have his wife back and i loved it i loved it then we had The Many Sins of Lord Cameron Mackenzie. This is the only other one that I have the paperback. I've ordered most of the other ones, but they're not here yet because I ordered them from Thrift Book. Um, but this one is about um, Cameron, who he is the one, he has a son, Danny, who is, I think in this one, he's like 16 years old. And he meets Ainsley Douglas, who he first meets her six years ago, I think, when she's newly married and she's trying to steal something back from him. And so she steals it from his rooms and they have this encounter where they almost sleep together. But she's married at the time and she does love her husband even though they're not having like sexual relations with each other. And so she has to say goodbye to him. And now fast forward six years later and her husband has died because he was much older than her. And she 
works for Queen Victoria and she's one of Victoria's companions. And now in this story, um, it is going with the thought that Queen Victoria possibly had an affair with John Brown and John Brown's letters that Victoria wrote to him have been stolen by one of her previous ladies maids and so Ainsley is trying to steal them back from her and so she believes that this woman who stole them hid them in Cameron's rooms and so she gets caught in Cameron's rooms and he decides that now's the time she's not married anymore he's not connected to anybody he wants Ainsley to be his mistress and so he goes about trying to make that happen and Ainsley is trying to decide if she wants to continue to live the faithful life that she did or if she wants to be wicked and be with Cameron. So both of them are dealing with some trauma. Um, there is a reason why Ainsley married someone so much older than her, um, which I won't spoil, and Cameron we know has been through some trauma because his wife actually killed herself, um, but it's speculated that Cameron killed her as is with all the Mackenzies, they, have all, they all have some drama about them. And he also, his son Danny, who like we said is 16, he um, has decided he also wants Ainsley to be his mistress <laughs> because Ainsley is only a few years older than him, um, even though, cause, she, cause she's like, she's 11 years older than him but she's like 11 years younger than his dad, basically, is how that works out. And so it's adorable. I love these books. Next is The Duke's Perfect Wife, which is about the oldest Mackenzie, um, Hart Mackenzie, who is the Duke. And we have been watching him be kind of stingy and sticklery and proper because he is trying to make a run for... Um, prime minister and he has a love from his childhood named Eleanor who he is trying to get to marry him because 10 years ago they were engaged and he was a must, much less put together man at that time and she broke off their engagement and now in that meantime her family has gotten poorer and poorer and he had mistresses he had a wife and son both die in childbirth and then he had a mistress die who we saw we saw that happen in the first book in the series and he's ready to try again and oh my gosh it's good there's a whole blackmailing thing he's being blackmailed um there is naughty pictures of him that are out in the world and eleanor decides she's going to try to help him and He's ready to have Eleanor back in his life. Um, this is probably tied as my favorite in the series with The Madness of Lord Ian McKenzie. Um, I just really love Hart. I really do. He really, he's a character who he was probably one of the worst in the series. Because a lot of the other, the other men, they have like misperceived things about them. Whereas Hart, he actually was these things that people thought about him and he makes a concerted effort to clean up his life and change himself and I really really love that about him so I really like Hart he makes me happy then I read a Mackenzie family Christmas which is just a um, you know a, a sequel it, it's it's only like 180 pages and it's a Christmas one so it has all the couples we've met so far and we get introduced to a couple other couples <laughs> because then we have book five which is the seduction of Elliot McBride and so Ainsley um, who's from the third book this is actually her um, younger brother or older brother it's her older brother Elliot who was in the army in India um, he was then a prisoner of war there and then he escaped but then he went back and then like anyway and so for him he's been through quite a tough time and he actually is now back and he wants to marry the love of his life and so he shows up on her wedding day to stop her wedding. He's been having his sister and his friends like keep an eye on her. And he's literally planning to do a big old like bust down the church doors and stop the wedding. But before he can do that, 
the brides the the groom to be actually runs away with his piano teacher so he doesn't actually get to break up the wedding it already is breaking up and then on top of that the girl that he wants to marry she actually asked him to marry her as kind of like a joke but she had actually been waiting for him all this time that he'd been gone but he was too sad and messed up to be with her um and now he's like ready to try so this one was very dark there's a lot of ptsd happening there's a lot of bad bad things that happen to elliot but it's so good to see him get a happy ending and i just i loved it so much and then the last one that I've read so far, even though I'm in the middle of two or three more of these books, there's still another like 10 of them for me to read and I'm just eating it all up, um, is The Untamed Mackenzie, which is about the bastard son Lloyd Fellows, who is actually the police detective that is going after Ian and Hart in the beginning of the series. Um, but we find out that he had a grudge because he's the bastard's son and his father never acknowledged him or treated him well. And this is about his love story with Juliana, who is Isabella's younger sister. Um, and she is accused of murder. And Lloyd is going to do everything he possibly can to save her from the gallows. Um, this one's also a shorter one. It's only 180 pages. And that's probably my own. Like, I only gave this one four stars because I wanted it to be longer the case takes up most of the time um and i really wanted more of a happy ending for these guys so i'm kind of sad about that it's making me sad but i loved it so those are all the books i've read so far i'm in the middle of the wicked deeds of daniel mckenzie i'm finally getting daniel's book and then there's just like there's so many more books and the entire series is on um audible escape so you should definitely check it out so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up but that's everything that I've read in the past week. Um, look out. The next wrap-up I do, there's another week and a half of June, isn't there? There is. Um, but yeah, I put up new videos every, well, there's no specific day. I put up three to four videos a week. Make sure you check those out. If you want to purchase any of these books, make sure you check out my Amazon storefront down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.